Hello. Yes. Yes, it's it's finally back. Um <laughs> Caves of Cud. Um welcome to season 5. W what is uh what is the focus of season 5? Well, um I'm going to I'm going to get a bit of a dis bit of disappointment out of the way right away. Um I'm going to be playing on role play mode. But there's a specific reason for that. The specific reason is that um you know, as I've played Cud, a lot of the um, a lot of my focus, a lot of my energy is, uh, has been focused on trying to beat the game, trying to get to the end, and um, I feel like um, that has led to some of my CUD series feeling very samey, and it's also led to a little bit of burnout from my end, um, hence why we haven't had a CUD uh, playthrough in quite a long time. So I think you'll agree that something needs to change. A few things need to change. And I need to have a focus or some kind of a goal that isn't just beat the game. Um, and, you know, I just, I also don't think that beating the game is necessarily the most interesting thing about CUD. It's certainly a very interesting thing, but it doesn't have to be. And it doesn't have to be my only goal either. So this is the Bounty Hunter series. This is going to be uh, a series in which I um, attempt to get the achievements. There have been new achievements added to Caves of Cud, and a lot of them are really interesting, and a lot of them force you to play the game in a very different way. And I think that they would serve as very um, welcome goals to shake things up a bit and give me new things to do. Um, I still want to play Cud and get the most out of it. I just don't want to end up playing it in exactly the same way every single time. It's not fun for me and it's probably not very entertaining for you. So I'm going to be making an Esper and the reason is is because um, there's a couple of achievements associated with an Esper including mutations and uh, leveling up mutations and I think that an Esper would be a good way of uh, you know checking a lot of those boxes. Now I don't necessarily uh, think that every single like I don't want to try and, and do every single achievement in one playthrough. That's actually not even possible because a lot of achievements rely on beating Caves of Cud um, multiple times in varying levels of succession. So, um, you know, I will have to play the game as, as per usual. That's still going to happen. And I will probably be using a lot of my gathered knowledge in order to do that. So, you know, in the end of the day, I'm still going to be playing Cud as I probably would. But I will have to stretch a little bit of myself... Um, out of my comfort zone a bit and I mean the first things first like I am not very comfortable with mutations or mutants in the first place I tend to not play them because I'm not very good or creative when it comes to building a mutant um but uh you know let me see actually there might be a preset that would be better for better for us um starhide esper what I want is the temp what I want is temporal fugue that's the important thing that we get. Uh, and it looks to me like there's only the one Esper. And so we're going to have to build one. We'll build one. It's fine. I don't mind. Um, we will want some Ego, but I... Oh, this one's not bad. Customs and Folklore, I love. I love Customs and Folklore. Um, the other thing I want to experiment with this series is because... Is I don't know if, like, f people want... Edited or, edited or unedited content. And I think that this is kind of a contentious thing, and I, something I would like to attempt with this series is to do both and see what people like more. Do you want to see a montage of me trying to get an achievement, or do you want to see the steps I take to get there? We'll, we'll find out together, you know. Um, Water Merchant, plus two Ego, Short Blade, Snake Oiler plus 200 reputation with the water barons. I tend to not do the water merchant. I think I probably just want to do the apostle for the extra ego, but if I'm being honest, that extra ego isn't necessarily a good thing. Although, here's the thing, if we're just going to be doing temporal fugue in order to get our 20 clones, that's the achievement I'm going for, um, is 20 clones, um, and I'm going to be doubling and tripling down on temporal fugue, then it might be good to to get a lot of ego. Um, I know I still I still owe you the next uh, tutorial um, for 
for building a uh, a mutant, and you know that's I, I it's it's been kind of trepidous. I, I want to do it properly, which means I don't end up doing it. Um, but one thing I did want to do is uh, talk about balancing mutations. And when you're an esper, you have to play this balancing game between building your ego or not building your ego and taking some mutations and not others and you know is it kind of playing things cautiously now honestly what would be really good is if i didn't play an esper and instead um took temporal fugue and like mostly physical mutations and that way when i build my ego it's only increasing our temporal fugue and nothing else that would be nice. And that way we don't uh, build too much of our glimmer. One of my favorite builds is, of course, and I don't think I've done a series on it, is doing Temporal Fugue with uh, multiple arms. And uh, let's see what else. Multiple arms and double muscled. That's pretty good. Uh, this, uh, this is the build I talked about in the tutorial series, and it's a pretty good one. I like it a lot. Uh, basically, just like make a really muscle-bound um, freakazoid that can um, temporal fugue, and then you just have a lot of cudgelly damage. Of course, if that's the case, we might want to double down on cudgels, but we don't necessarily want to do that. How many Do I have any points left? No. So why don't we consider a physical defect? Now the the foot hooks for feet, I've talked about this before, has been nerfed. So I don't necessarily want hooks for feet. Irritable, ge irritable genome is actually bad for us because I want to be putting basically all of my points into ten temporal fugue. Um, so that's not good. Brittle bones isn't bad. Falling and other sources of concussion Concussive damage. Um, amphibious isn't bad either. You pour f water on yourself rather than drinking it to quench your thirst. You require about two thirds more water than usual. Yeah, we can we can make up for that in other ways. So let's take that <clears throat> and um, we'll take something else. I do really like heightened hearing. Heightened quickness would actually be really good. Let's take heightened quickness. I haven't really played with that too much. I wonder if you took photosynthetic skin, does it make up for that water? Probably not, actually. That's because it's a food source more, more than anything. So uh, we're going to go... Um, well, I'm not going to go do my agility thing. I, I really like agility for making the early game uh, much easier. But, you know, people tell me a lot, go toughness. Toughness is your, is your friend. I don't agree. I don't know. I, something like having more health does not really make up for taking more hits, you know? And that agility, it peters out. Like, its relevancy in the late game of Cud is not there. It doesn't, you know, it's not good. Um, but the early game agility is just so good, and it really, um, it, it can really make a difference. But we're going to be on roleplay mode, so I don't care too much if I die. Not a big deal. Having negative three toughness is actually not not probably a great idea. So we'll shortchange agility a little bit. I do really want to have that intelligence. I, it always hurts me not to have that intelligence. Number of hit points, your natural healing rate, and your ability to resist poison and disease. Yeah, I mean, that's probably pretty important. Um, I hate shortchanging willpower. It's, you know, one of the best. They're all good, though. These are all good. So we have a fairly balanced build here. Um, save to library. We'll call this, I don't know, basic temporal fugue. It's, it's a bad name, but you'll have to forgive me. Hey, at least we're getting more cut content, right? Like, for real. I know that people have been maybe a little upset that I have... Um, digressed so much from Caves of Cud. I mean, this basically was a Caves of... You know, the, the the impetus of this channel was to make Caves of Cud content. So I understand that people might feel annoyed that I'm not doing Caves of Cud content. I can understand that. You know, you subscribe for a reason and then, uh, and then you don't get what you want. Um, I don't really have a justification. My explanation is I get bored. You know, I can't, I can't be doing 
the same thing forever. And if I try, then eventually, you're gonna hear a noise here. Oh, no, maybe not. If I try, then eventually I will begin to resent, you know, a game like Cud. I need to take a break and that'll make me enjoy the game far more and that'll hopefully make my content more interesting for you. Cud's a hard game and it's a cruel mistress. Um, and at a certain point, you can you can get yourself burnt out on Cud. It to uh, you know die a few ways to something unpredictable, and you know you can be like, oh well, you know like play something else that, that doesn't treat me like uh, an enemy. But you know every they, you know all roads eventually lead back to Cud, and you find yourself playing it again. Um, so I, I hope you forgive me for um, hated by the denizens of Eid Freehold. That's a bummer. Uh, but that admired by frogs, you might know why I want that admired by frogs. And that is because I need to um, have a frog teach me how to jump. That's an achievement. It's actually one of the hardest achievements to get because it is pure RNG. Uh, that you might find a um, a frog, a legendary frog that you can befriend. But let's see, we already have that frog uh, reputation. That's that's a, gonna make a big, a big. That's a big step for us. Let's see here, frogs negative two seventy five. So like, yeah, that's a bummer. Um, let's talk to our lad here. Don't run away. Whoops, I hit the numpad. Uh, sorry, the, yeah, the, the num key. All right. By the way, um, people always ask, so I will tell you. Uh, if you're wondering if how to go to point of interest, you hit the back space key. It's been in CUD for a long time, but if you don't know about it, then it always feels like a revelation. Um, so there you go. It's one of my favorite keys, and it makes uh, navigating towns just so much nicer. Elder Alwuhuhudubu. I already spoke to El Elder Alwuhuhudubu, so let's not do that. There's. A I need to get one more mission. Maybe Yamet. Aha! Less the Magnolia Chevron that you are here. Traveling nomads came by our village the other day. While breaking bread, they spoke of an intriguing place, Dazanip. All right, Dazanip. We will go to Dazanip, but maybe not right away. And also, I'm going to, uh, where is our, where is our zealot? Where is he? Did I already kill him? Uh, the plan was to kill him. What happened to the zealot? Did he run? Did he, like, flee? Because he, he sensed his time was soon. Ooh, this is a nice, very nice, uh, screen with lots of mushrooms. Luminous mushrooms for selling. Uh, you might be at wondering um, what uh, what kind of mods am I playing with? Nothing game changing as per usual. Although I will say, um, if this series goes well, if I tend you know succeed in my bounty hunting uh, goal of achieving everything in Cud, then um, I will say that season six is going to be mods. We're going to be playing with mods. Um, that's been a thing that is has been requested uh, of me to do is to play with mods and I can understand why there's some really cool game-changing mods um ooh, is that are those new sound effects I think they are I have heard that there are uh, there were new sound effects added to cud that seemed like a new one yeah interesting okay yeah uh, there's a the dev the the cud dev team has has a new member and they are uh, a sound designer, and that's cool. I'm I'm happy. Any any small like I don't know how to say it, small thing, so, small quality of life thing. I mean, can you call sound effects a quality of life feature? What would you call sound effects? Are they a feature even of a game? I mean, technically they are a feature, of course, but like it's such a small thing, and yet it makes such a big difference. And that's the thing about Cud is like. Um, the, the small things are going to matter the most. You don't see any hostiles nearby. Well, that's going to change. 
Okay, we want to we want to step away from there cuz I am taking some pretty nasty damage. Um I'm using uh, I don't know if I switched this key myself, but I switched my attack melee attack nearest to the period key on my numpad, so you may see me make use of that. Um, we might not want to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and Temporal Fugue. We could try and proselytize. Do I have a gun? I do not. Let's try and proselytize this fool. Nope. Maybe time to hit the bricks. Sprint S. Just because I am playing in roleplay mode does not necessarily mean that I uh, want to die. Because, you know, dying still has a consequence in this game, you know? Like, everything I'm doing right now can very easily be undone by dying. So, you know, it's not like the game has zero consequence. There's a weird contention. Like, I don't know, I don't understand this, but like, I would say for the most part, um, the Caves of Code community is chill. It's a good one. It's a very good one. I know that some people would agree, disagree, <laughs> but there's you know there's reasons. Um, but I'd say that for the most part, the Caves of Code community is a, is a chill and and, and decent one. Um, but I still come across the occasional weird gatekeeper when it comes to um, how you play a game. It's because technically Caves of Code is a um, inspired to name your torch. Do you wish to? Sure. Um, enter name light bearer there. And we're going to make it, um, we can make it Aurora blaze. There you go. I mean, technically caves of cut is a traditional roguelike. And with that comes a lot of baggage, you know, like, uh, a temp, a, a, a traditional roguelike it's easy to get gatekeepy gatekeep about it because it takes such a long time to really um, become familiar enough to really play a traditional roguelike. And I mean, the proof is in the pudding. Really, the only one I have been able to get used to playing to actually play properly is Caves of Cut. I've tried a lot of them. You, you, if you've been here for a long time, if you've watched my channel grow, if you've seen me grow as a YouTuber, uh, what a terrible thing to call yourself also. Um, then you will know that uh, I have tried other traditional roguelikes and uh, you may not notice that a lot of them don't stick around. Even one like, for instance, um, Rift Wizard, which you know I keep meaning to come back to, but I just don't feel the drive to because it's just like, it really is, um, you know, an exercise in like beating yourself in the face with ooh that was an interesting sound with the uh, with the knowledge that you do not have like it is a trial by fire and um you are either into that or you're not and i generally am but if i find myself like not getting better or not growing then i kind of lose motivation a little bit i, I just think that and especially since I'm doing this, we're hungry and moist. <laughs> Yo, it me. Um, especially since I'm like tr attempting to do this for not just my own entertainment, but yours as well. Um, like, I really don't want to put myself in a situation or end up in a situation where it's like, well, I'm... I'm not doing well, and I'm also not getting better, and I'm also not learning anything. Um, because sometimes you don't know why you failed. You don't know what you did wrong. Um, and traditional roguelikes are really the best for not knowing what you did wrong, necessarily. Cud, I've had a lot of help from the community, from, uh, from like NARF, from devs, to learn how to play the game properly and so you know and I, I feel very privileged for that um let's temporal fugue oof that takes a turn there we go please do we have uh, intimidate we do have intimidate 
Okay. Take a moment to heal. And we, we killed them with our friend. Was that a legendary I saw there for a second? No. Oh! Me? Oh, no, it was a, um... It's a caravan. Um, you know, I, I feel very privileged in that, that I was given, like, genuine, uh, help in learning how to play this game. And that's kind of what I, why I wanted to do the tutorial series, is because, you know, like, it... It's a it's a difficult game to get into, but it is worth it, and um, I think that you like it, it's worthwhile to make to to try like at least attempt to give other people um, a leg up, uh, an assistance, a, a bit of help to learning how to play the game because it's you know it it deserves it it, it deserves to have that um, amount of time dedicated to it but also i mean i owe a lot to cut you know i don't think i would have the uh, you know the uh, amount of eyes on my stuff as i do oh my god i'm dying i'm dying squirtle um we do not have temporal fugue we do have our friend croc here though uh, i do have a um a weapon but i don't have any shells so Nice, our croc beat that croc. Let's see if I can buy some bullets. I definitely don't think I would have the audience I do without Cud. Um, I'm not gonna give all of that credit to Cud, but I mean, it mostly is like, it's just such a good game that even even being adjacent to it, I feel like I'm, you know, on the, standing on the, the, the shoulders of giants, you know, like, I, definitely, I would say it's my favorite game, but I also think it's just one of the best games ever made. So, I, I know that's like a difficult... How can you say that? Um, I just think it's so... Un, like, it's something I do t think about a lot, but I, I can't think of any other game um, that is as complex as Cud and also as well constructed. Um, what do we want to do here? I have some witchwood bark. Let's eat some witchwood bark. Like, when you think about how many working systems there are in CUD, and think about how how much effort it must have been to get all of those systems, not just working, but working in a way that it, make, like, it makes sense and it's fun. That's just a, such a monolithic task. Uh, what kind of reputation do we have here loved by snap jaws hated by Cragmench. that's not bad being friends to Cragmench might be nice but that being said i don't think i have um i don't have the, i'm not ready to be fighting someone like that i'm not sure if if i increase my ego by one if it would um give me an extra point No. Okay, so it's on the even number. Well, that's a shame <laughs> that I just wasted that, but that's fine. Uh, I'm going to increase Temporal Fugue by one, and that'll actually give us an extra copy. Um, I, not only am I trying to get more copies on the screen, but I'm also trying to upgrade... One of, uh, one of the achievements is upgrade a mutation to level 10. So we have a gun now. You know what that means, right? That means that if I Temporal Fugue... Our copies should also... Wait, why don't I have... Did I not upgrade Temporal Fugue? Oh, you may not advance this mutation's rank yet. Oops. Due to my level. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. Oh. What happened? I think my... My clone shot me. That was rough. And now we are, are... Oh, nice. Leveled up. Maybe we killed the... Uh, no, we didn't kill the legendary. They are making their way downtown. Your, com your companion at Croc died. He was accidentally killed by you. Oh, no. That's the worst. You accidentally kill your own croc. 
Oh, where did he go? Uh, we could maybe proselytize them. They are injured. One, one or two good shots would be enough. Um. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna intimidate them first of all. And then we will shoot. Continue shooting them. Damn, they're they're good. Then I'll try proselytizing them. There we go. So if I really want to, I could maybe make friends with them. Feed them. <laughs> Chat. Yeah, we could make friends with them. I don't really want to though. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna have them be my friend for now. And maybe that means sacrificing a little bit of reputation with the Kragmensch, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. Um, okay, let's let's shoot some of these lads. That looks like another mask there. And maybe a good one. Is this my friend here? Friendly, yes. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Okay, let's grab this mask. Wet smiling sun mask with filters. Oh, nice. Yeah, let's uh, let's grab that. All right, our our snapjaw friend has has leveled up already. Um. Let me see. Get items. We're gonna we're gonna see what's on the map here. So this is uh, an item I or mod I have that just lets me um, basically assign things to grab. Gentling mask. Are those good? Can't remember. I think they're not good. Um, steel vine raper. I don't think that's good. So you, c I can assign things for grabbing, and then uh, when I do an auto explore. Then my dude will just like pick them, pick all the stuff up that I uh, assigned. Let's have a look at this. Acid gas grenade, nice. This is a pretty good screen. I might want to head back to our my village to uh, heal. Well, heal and save. Notice some ruins. Yeah, sure. Let's in investigate some ruins. Might be a bit dangerous, but magnesium alar. We have a couple friends. You might be able to hear cicadas in the background. We do have those in Canada. Maybe they add to the immersion. Oh, books already? Nice. Oh, okay. Um, we should be able to take on a slime, although Never mind. Wow, that sucks. I was like about to <laughs> we're, at, we're at literally square one now. I was about to go back to town and then I decided to take a risk on a ruin. What a what a foolish thing I did. That's literally 20 minutes or 20 minutes down the drain. And there there is therein lies the risk of um role play mode. It's not it's not necessarily a free pass. It still it can still suck. So this time I'm gonna go underground. Why not? Well, I can tell you a couple of reasons. Starting with this guy, the ele electrofuges are not are no slouch. Let's try proselytizing them. There we go. Uh, we we already died to you once. I don't really want to do that again. I don't have a gun now anymore. Okay, we got. This is, you know the worst parts of, uh, the worst part about fighting a slime is not only do they suck, but also you don't get any XP from them. Nice. Okay, that, uh, that, that robot was a good, good grab. Did our temporal, did our, our electro fugue die? Let's do a temporal fugue. Oh, 
Oh no, our, 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 our Electrofuge is still alive. I don't really like the situation, if I'm being honest. It's not a great one. Yeah, our, our Fugue has died. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave. We're hungry moist again. I know, uh, Narf has, uh, cooked up a mod that lets you save at campfires. And I like that in theory. I wouldn't mind playing with that, but it also feels a little bit, um, you know, like that's, that is a very, very role play. I don't, I don't want to say easy mode because then I just sound like just as bad as the gatekeepers, but you know, like that, that sounds maybe a bit too much of a gimme. So, um, and I, you know, I'm sure I'm already going to hear it from people about <laughs> playing on role play mode. I don't care. Ooh, is that a mechanist? Wait, come back, Mechanimus friend. Do not leave. Uh, machine commands, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, hold on. Yes, loved by the Mechanimus, hated by the villagers of Tamarod. Perfect. Your, your, your... Water is whatever. Share a secret with me. Pass on that. I know that there's good reasons to um, buy secrets. Let's uh, sell these shrooms. Um, but I, I'd rather keep Mechanimus rep if I can. Kind of want to buy... Well, this Muddy 2 for 200 seems tempting. So let's do that. I just realized I had some tubes on me and I, I didn't use them at all. So what do we have here? Oh, wow. Eater's Nectar Injector right away. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and use that one point of toughness. The, I've talked about this before, but, um, you know, Eater's Nectar Injectors, it's worth playing some kind of meta uh, gambit with them as a, um, I don't want to die, as a Trukin. Uh, but as a mutant, they're they're not, not nearly as, you know, special. They're still very good, like, you know, great, we have plus one toughness, that's fantastic. But, like, they're ridiculously good as a true kin. So, uh, you know, g kind of worlds apart in, in quality. All right, we're in our town and I'm gonna save. I know I don't have to, I don't have to enter and leave and come back and whatever, but I, I kind of want to. Um, and you know, so we're at level two. I did not progress very much, but uh, you know, that's, it is what it is. I, I, I made a mistake and mistakes are gonna happen and I have to relearn a few things to get back into this game. So maybe that'll be fun in its own right. But anyway, if you enjoyed this episode and you're excited for more cut content from me, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. And I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy. Thank you.